as they say another day another Emax video. It's your boy Uncle Dave once again and in this one we are going to be taking a look at some very tiny changes that you can make to make your Emacs um, better. Straight up better for you. Which one of those you like and which ones you are not going to use, totally up to you. I'm going to show you a few things. First and foremost, um, we are actually be taking a look at the terminal. The terminal that's built into Emacs. Yes, Emacs does have multiple shells and multiple terminals. It has um, something called term. It asks you what program to run in Nonscape Bash, and you have a fully functional terminal here. But Term has, uh, or happens to run into issues with NCurses applications, with certain scripts. So most people I know, they don't use Term. Um, the issue comes where, when you'd like to actually close it. This is why I don't use Term. Oh yeah, let's enter line mode. Uh, line mode means that we are actually controlling Emacs, not the terminal. In character mode, you can use all your um, key bindings that would normally go to Emacs, and instead they will be passed into you know, your application. Buffer terminal has a running process, kill it, yes or no. This is one of those things that we are going to change very quickly because typing in yes is incredibly annoying. The other one that I'd like to show you, it's a bit nicer, it's called ANSI term. And this is the one I use. It looks the same. It's not the same. It actually supports NCurses applications or curses in general. It, it's faster. It's, it's what I use. This is my terminal emulator of choice. It behaves like a normal buffer in line mode. In character mode, it's a normal terminal. So you can totally, after changing the mode, you can move around, you can copy stuff, and so on and so forth. You can copy it and you can paste it. You know, you can just do things. It's it's nice. It's very nice. But let's close it. And the first thing I would like to do is I set a key to actually run ter the terminal. But before we do that, we have to make a few changes. Because every time you launch the terminal, it's going to ask you what shell you'd like to run. I happen to use bash. I used bash for a long time and I'm going to continue using bash. Being asked what to run every time is annoying. So let's get rid of it. Let's visit our configuration file. And we are going to have a lot of fun with it today. As you can see, and this is one of those things that we will get into probably in the next video, uh, it's starting to get cluttered. Um, you can still understand where everything is because it's barely, a, you know, it's 44 lines, as you can see down at the bottom here. Um, but we'll have to start to somehow organize it. Spoiler alert, we'll do it in org mode, but not yet. First of all, let's write a bit of code that makes sure that we always use bash. How we do it is we define a variable, uh, let's call it my terminal shell, and um, have it be the value of bin bash, because this is where bash is located. Now we can also define the device and C term. And this is going to happen before for bash. Um, it'll be an interactive one. Interactive means that you, it can be manually called. And uh, interactive list, my term shell, this will be called our variable. Um, let's close it, yeah. Now we have to activate this advice with add activate. Add activate. Um, did I pronounce spell it correctly? Yes, I did. And C term. Okay. Now this looks fine, I guess. Let's execute this. Let's execute this. Let's save this. Let's launch. And C term. My term show. Oh, it's void. Void what? What do you mean? What do you mean it's void? This should not be happening. Oh yeah, because we did not execute this line. I wish I should have done evaluate, you know, just EFB and everything will be evaluated. I don't know why it went line for line. Now let's launch ANSI term. And it's going to automatically use bash, which is great. It's precisely what I want. And, you know, obviously this is just standard bash. So if you have a custom bash RC on your system, it's going to work. It's just bash. 
Now let's get back to line mode and kill this terminal. And let's get rid of this. I want to be able to answer with Y instead of typing in yes. It's actually very simple to do. Um, it's something called an alias. We are going to define an alias. Alias means, or aliases in Lisp or Elisp are mostly used to make sure that, let's, okay, there's two functions. One of them will be called, for instance, by when we kill a buffer, and we'll make sure that another one is called in its place. The function that is being called now is called yes or no p, and the one we like it to call is called y or n p. Let's close this. Um, let's evaluate this. Let's make sure it works. So now when we launch nc term and we change the line mode, kill it, we can just hit y and it's going to work. That's beautiful. I use the terminal a lot for a lot of things. I use it less and less as I just happen to do with literally everything within Emacs. However, there's one thing that I really like since I used a window manager before I switched to full on Emacs. Um, I like being able to hit the super key and the space or the return key, enter, and then I like it when it launches the terminal. So let's let's set that up. It's actually very simple. There's a function built into Emacs called global set key. This sets a key binding to a certain command. As I started typing, as you can see at the bottom, it says global set key. To arguments it takes as key and then the command. So it's precisely what we are going to do. The first argument will be the key. So this will be a keyboard key. And we are going to be hitting super plus return. Super key is the Windows key on um, normal keyboards. For Mac OS or Apple keyboards, it's I think it's just called super. I'm pretty sure. Now the command, as you can see, command is highlighted now. This is what we are inputting right now. NC term. Let's go to the end, evaluate this, and let's hit super and enter. And we now have our very own terminal. Let's, I mean, I'm very happy about all of this, but let's kill this buffer. Okay, great. We have set up a terminal emulator from within Emacs. There's a few more things that I'll, obviously it goes without saying, if you are using a different terminal emulator and you have it set up the way you like, you don't want to use this, then by all means omit this bit. Don't put this in your config file. You don't need to. I just happen to enjoy using um, NC term. I think it's nice. There's also another thing that will become apparent now as our um, configuration file gets larger. Let's make it a bit larger. As, as I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to reach the last line and then scroll some more, it's going to skip like a large portion. It's going to skip like a, an entire screen. I'm not a big on this behavior. Maybe you like, maybe it's easier when you are working with huge documents. I don't do this a lot. So I want to set this to a more sane default. There's a variable called scroll conservatively. And this does not have anything with political affiliations. Now scroll conservatively will change the behavior of well, scrolling. The value I like for it is 100. So let's go, let's evaluate it. And let's get to the very top. And as we scroll down now, as we reach the last line, um, we are going to be scrolling line per line. This is what I like way more. Uh, if you don't, and you know, skip this. Don't do it, don't set it. Another thing is there is something called a ring bell function. Um, occasionally, for say warnings or well a lot of stuff that actually I don't really care about Emacs is going to flash some uh, Emacs versions will actually have like a audible bell sound I almost crapped my pants the first time I heard it I'm not sure if it came from an extension or not but I just decided to disable it for good measure because it's annoying set Q ring bell function and set it to ignore because this is insanely annoying to me at least. Now another thing that I would like to show you is whenever you switch buffers or windows or frames even, the first thing you normally do is look for your cursor, right? And I want to be able to look to find my cursor very quickly. There is a few things that you can do to make um, finding your cursor easier. First one is called global highlight line mode. It's something I really like. Um, and I'll show you what it looks like, just so you can see if it's something you enjoy. It looks 
bad on some themes, it looks really good on others. Where my cursor is, the line is just slightly highlighted. But there's an issue with this. And allow me to show you the issue. Let's close Emacs. Actually save all buffers, yes. Let's go to a terminal. Let's launch Emacs in the terminal. Actually, in this terminal emulator, that's cool. That everything looks fine. Even our theme is applied, as you can see. But if you launched this in the TTY, in your virtual console, with default colors, the highlight will be like yellow or green. And the text on the line that your cursor is on will become almost unreadable. That's bad. And I don't want it to actually work while um, we are in the virtual console. I don't use the virtual console much, I'm not gonna lie. But when I do, and you know, global uh, highlight line mode, it just, I, it, it's just unusable. So we can set global um, highlight line mode to work only when we are actually using the GUI version of Emacs. The way we do it is with the keyword when, which is like an if statement in list, window system, this is a variable that is being set um, to true when we are in the GUI, and it's set to false when we are using the um, terminal mode, the no window mode. So let's set this, nothing is going to change because we are in the GUI. So yeah, that's about it. You, you probably want to have this, um, most people use this from what I've gathered. It's very easy to find your cursor this way. There's another thing that we can set up. This is, it's just more for flavor, but I really like the way it looks. Um, there's something called Global Pretify Symbols Mode. And I'm going to enable it and show you what it does, because I think it's still one of those things, you know, you forget about them, but they look really nice. When you type in Lambda, yeah, Lambda, it's going to turn it into this, you know, Lambda symbol. For instance, it does a few other symbols as well, but Lambdas, you know, Lisp uses Lambdas a lot. This looks really cool, and it saves you some space. You may not want to enable it, I like having it enabled. As a matter of fact, I like it having it enabled only in the Windows system. So I'm going to do the, uh, exactly what we did with Global Highlight Line Mode. Another thing that we have no that you might have noticed, is, let's close Emacs, let's save this file. And let's go to our Emacs directory where we edited our files. Um, there is a file called init.tl and it has this, you know, the tilde symbol. This is something called an autosave or a backup. I'm not actually sure because I don't use those. I really don't want Emacs to create files on my file system without specifically telling it to. I disable auto savings or auto saves and backups you may not want to do that it's totally up to you i disable those because i'm not a big fan of them so let's let's go to emacs call it a dl and as with everything else there is variables that you can set to disable those now this one's called make backup files you can set it to nil and the other one is called um auto save default no yeah pretty sure and that's it now it won't create backups and it won't do these autosave files any longer which is great the last thing i have prepared for you is a package called beacon a beacon is something that you know it's one of, again one of those things it's tiny it's barely noticeable but you would notice it if it was you know gone as already mentioned, when we switch buffers or windows or frames, even we look for our cursor. Beacon mode is going to very, very briefly, for a short period of time, highlight the line our cursor is on. Now, we already have our lines highlighted, and I like having this behavior persistently, so it's, you know, highlighted all the time. But the beacon, you know, it's up to you. I'm going to show you what beacon looks like. Let's ensure true, so let's get download, let's config it. As you can see, now I'm not using, but actually, no, let's use init instead of config. Um, and it, the way you invoke it is beacon mode, pass in a positive value, close it up, evaluate this, wait for it to compile and install, and done. Now, if we switch buffers, actually, let's not do that. I hate the list buffers functionality. Uh, you saw it right there. 
let's change to buffer list and when the, the, the line my cursor is on was very briefly highlighted I like this behavior you may not so by all means you know don't use it I like beacon it's such a tiny package it's so useful and yeah that's about it so don't ever forget to save your customizations because now your editor is starting to look a bit more nicer. You have your favorite font, you have your favorite theme. Maybe you're still looking for nicer themes, sure. We have a few packages installed. Some settings are set up. You can use a terminal emulator very easily. And obviously you can change the key binding and you can change um, the shell. If you're using say ZSH or Fish, whatever. So yeah, that's about it for this video, I think. Um, we've done a lot, so yeah it's time to take a break in the next video i'm going to be starting to talk about org mode org mode is i really should have instead made a whole series on org mode but we'll talk about the basics because we are going to need them we'll need the basics for org mode to commence and set our configuration to look nice so thanks you for watching i hope you tune in i hope you stay tuned you probably you know at the point where you're watching this you can just click on next video i need to record this because i am now done and i need to take a break and actually you know make some notes for other videos thank you for watching once again and i'll see you in the next video bye bye